Hey, from Canada. You guys, uh, you guys, super American people are gonna love the fact that the Canadian post office really sucks, right? So if you guys are looking to like point fingers and be like, ah, oh, there's something wrong with them up there. The Canadian post office, the UPS, both of them, it just sucks. Now I say sucks because we're in a kind of a small rural area and who knows, maybe in the city it's even better. Badge? What are your thoughts on the Canadian post office? Cause somebody's going to probably they say, oh, you're a dick. They stay out of the Amazon business, is what I think. Because what they do is they will not deliver anything over 35 pounds, but then they go and say, well, it's the wrong address when yeah. we got everything delivered there. So I'm not quite, I think they should stay at Amazon business. <laughs> That's what I think. Anyway, today we have an exciting day. We're putting in uh, subfloors. Got a few pieces of wood over there so far. We're gonna bring all the rest of this uh, sound in insulation up. We're gonna put all the wood in. We're gonna put heat insulation, you know, foam board insulation and all this stuff. So stick around, today's gonna be an amazing day. And uh, thanks to Badge for hosting us out here. Oh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> Mikey. All right, guys. Like I said, today is uh, floor day. Fl uh, Subfloor day. So uh, Michael's getting floored. <laughs> we we got some couple measurements. I'm gonna give him a hand. I'm gonna turn on the GoPro. Let's do a nice time lapse of how much stuff we can get done today. Quick run through. This is the uh, blue skin ice shield. Whatever you want to call it. I put strips up there. I'm going to drive this sucker to Colorado. And then notice how noisy it is. And uh, I'll put Dynamatic what? Stream there. And then if we need to add more, we'll just uh, we'll just put more in the front. Because that's where most of the sound comes from. Is there and then the wheel wells. Yes? Oh, boy. Perfect? Perfect. He, he, he doesn't know that I was so good in math. But now he's finally realizing it. This right here is going to be your hallway, so we're trying to figure out what supports we're going to put in because Jax wants a nice big shower. So it's going to be somewhere around 30, 32 inches, plus the wall and studs and whatnot. So we're going to end up with a wall somewhere like right here. So that's going to be your, your bathroom. Right. And then on this side, you're putting a cabinet because you wanted your kitchen, I think your oven you wanted here or something. So that's going to be a 24-inch cabinet plus, you know, the backer and stuff. So we'll say like 26 for fun. So this, your kitchen is going to come out to here. So your hallway will end up being like this big. Uh, that's plenty wide. Yeah. Honestly. So then we want to put probably a center support here for walking. So that when you're walking, oh, yeah. you don't get any soft spots. Yeah. Now. So we'll, we'll throw that in there. We're not we're not we're not looking for RV quality, Mike. No. We're, we're looking for school bus quality. That's right. There's a big difference. <laughs> switches in this wall so we can do shallow boxes for your electrical mm -hmm. and then your wall will be right here which means your shower will start right there okay so if your shower hypothetically starts right there your shower will end up being just be like a 29 and a half wide I think that's okay I've I mean, seen smaller. We can we can kind of mock it up a little bit for you to feel it. Yeah, I mean, how, then, what's what's the dimensions of yours? Thirty-two by thirty-two. Okay, and we're talking thirty-one, thirty and a half. What was that? You're talking. Well, I gotta frame this guy out so we can frame this out like here. Right. So if I did that, you're talking. I mean, these are all estimates, but. If you're talking estimates here, you're talking uh, 29. Okay, so two. Within three inches on my shower, on, on your, but that's only on your width because you still have the open space where the toilet is. Right. You know. So I think I would shower this way, right? Yeah. And then your shower this direction. Because after all, it is a school bus. This isn't a uh, a mansion. It's a tiny home. So your wall is going to be like that. Okay. 
because uh, we need to get the plumbing and diverter in this wall. Yep. So we'll put the plumbing like that. So this wall will be start there. So your shower starts right there and it has to go to the skylight, which is going to be somewhere around here. So you're going to end up with 29, 29 by 29. 29. 29. Well, actually, no, because you got to lose an inch and a half for your wall. I think, I think it's going to work. Well, I'll just have to eat less tacos. Uh -huh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of what we're dealing with, although we need to uh, put a little 2 by 4 in the middle. Uh, Mike is such a genius at building that he's like, wait, we messed up. So we had to uh, basically cut out the area that's going to become the shower. And yeah, and then so we're putting these things where the wall goes, not necessarily every four feet. Here, no I'll wait. Yeah, no weight's going to go over this part, so we're making this a little bit bigger. Like, this isn't a walk area. The walk area is, is where we don't want the little flexes in the floors. So, do you want to explain what's going on? Yeah, so Jack's here wants, would you want a queen, a full size bed queen? Well, a queen. Yeah, we're going for a queen, but it's foam so we can cut. Yeah. But the idea is, is that... Or squeeze it. Yeah, or squeeze the foam. So, the idea is that these, this back wall, whatever molding you put, plus the bed, plus your wall, to the wheel well, you need to know that in your yeah. subfloor because Jack's what we're doing is we're putting a sunken a, a sunken tub or shower base. Yeah. So his shower base is going to essentially be because below the subfloor, so he gets that extra inch and a half headroom. Yeah, for two reasons. One, I'm a tall dude. If you guys don't know that in the videos, I'm six foot one, and also um, uh, to keep the water in, the water's gonna yeah, we're gonna so tile down so it keeps you know uh, you know gravity. Yeah. So the the problem is is that you need to kind of know. You know, there'll, there'll be plywood, you know, up to here, and then this is his actual shower. So you need to kind of know where this beam's going now before you even start doing it. The other problem is we have this skylight up here, and the wall, the plan is the wall's going to go pretty much just like that. Now, most people would probably say go grab a level or a plumb bob, but the problem is we're on an uneven bus on a suspension where nothing is actually square level. So then we have to figure out where is the bottom of the shower base going to be to actually be able to make this sunken tub in the correct spot within the subfloor. So when you're building buses, it can be really difficult because you don't want to corner yourself at such an early stage. Um, unfortunately, right now, we're not in a super level spot. Um, I, you already said we're going to Colorado, so there we're actually going to be on a, you know, a concrete slab. We can level the bus out and actually get you know, a bit better measurement. So right now we're kind of just trying to work with what we got, but essentially this is Jack's shower, this space right here. So, I, that to me sounds so, good. The toilet's gonna sit on top of this thing, yep. the wheel well, and, the and if wall, I, and if I need to, uh, cause I got broad shoulder, so, shoulders, so if I, my body is like this sideways, it's no big deal. It's a freaking tiny house. It's not a mansion, guys, so yeah. you can't have everything. You have to compromise. Yeah, and for anyone who's wondering this space, uh, the shower base is probably going to end up being around 29 inches by about 31 inches. So it's not, you know, a typical residential 32 by 32 or something. But you got to remember, he'll have, you know, elbow room over here because the, the toilet and shower are all going to be in kind of one big wet space. Uh, if you've seen my bathroom, it's going to be pretty similar to that. He, he wants a similar design. Dude, if you guys haven't seen this bus, you got to go check it out. Navigation Nowhere. It is my favorite bus on the internet. My personal opinion, the best one. So having Michael is a huge help because uh, otherwise, you know, you could put something in and, and, and then have to backtrack, which I know I did in the first one. So otherwise, uh, I would say maybe mark things out in advance, yeah. tape it out, do something, cause, uh, um, because he's done buses before, he knows what to look for. This is the uh, insulation so far because we're dealing with the elements up here in Canada, Canada, A. Eh? We got the rain coming, so we're gonna put this uh, plywood over and then get back to work. All right, there we go. I went against Michael's recommendation preferences. I screwed him in. That's only because humans are a creature of habit, and I did it before. And I'm not saying it's the right way, but I'm doing it again. And. Uh, Uncle Dan used to have the story about why, when you make split pea soup, you know, it's like, why do you put the ham hock in there? 
and uh, so the first, the last generation was like, I don't know why we put it in there. It's because my mom did it. You go back another generation, I don't know. It's because my mom did it. You go back another generation, oh, well that's because it was during the war, or we couldn't cut it, or the bowl, the uh, the uh, cooking vessel wasn't large enough, and so you just you know put the whole thing in there or whatever. So, anyways, I know the story's a little off, but it's been a few years since I have heard that one. But anyways, creature habit. We're doing it. Michael, are you going to do another video on how not to uh, screw in the floor on your channel? I could do that. Yeah, you should do that. Because he's got great information, but I didn't listen to him on that. It's okay. I mean, in the end, <laughs> it's all going to work out. Yep. Plus, it's still going to run. Yes. Guys, check it out. Six or seven weeks later, I don't even know at this point, we're getting in a floor today. That makes me re really, really happy. Look at that, guys. Oh, man. Wow, man. We're, we got like Shooter McGavin over here, but like for Cutter, we got Cutter, Woo! Cutter McCutter right here. Look at this. We got a little tongue and groove, and we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna get that right in there. Holy crap, dude, that was good. Let's check out my shower, guys. What do you think? What do you think? You think this is big enough for me? Six foot one, dude. With broad shoulders. I think it will be. And I think then so here's too. your closet. We're gonna bump that out. We'll do. It's gonna come off the wall. Twenty four is a cabinet. We'll, we'll give it like an inch for because the walls aren't straight. Plus the molding. So we'll go with twenty five and a half. Your cabinet will come. Or your closet cabinet right there. So that's your hallway. Cool. Uh, that's plenty wide of a hallway. I mean, it, it looks like you basically just divided the bus in three. Like one-third, two-thirds, yeah, three-thirds. I mean, it, it's without, I mean, how wide of a space do you really need? Like, you don't have to go sideways. This is plenty of space, so. Oh, yeah, it's a, how, it's a, uh, 30, 31-inch hallway. So that's almost, that's almost, yeah, good. that's like, you know, yeah. residential-wise, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not code, but you're not going to do that in a bus. Right. So, but... All right, guys, it's coming together. We got the floor done. We're gonna get the floor done, uh, you know, uh, before we head to uh, Denver. Also, a little disappointed. I don't know. Did I mention that already? I think what? I did. Postal. Oh, no, you the did. package came today, and it needed a credit card because apparently in uh, Canada you have to play customs, even though I'm shipping something from the U.S. and I'm U.S. citizen, and I'm bringing it back to the U.S. Go figure. trying to get as much finished as possible. We got rain coming. This is where we are. So essentially, we're going lengthwise, right? This is where the second piece, second lengthwise piece will hit. It's at 16 feet. Uh, and this is how we're doing the uh, uh, subfloor. Very sturdy and secure. So if you're stepping on, I mean, all this is super secure because it's super thick, dense, uh, you know, uh, uh, flooring. So. Or, or foam, right? Foam board insulation. So yeah, Michael's uh, gonna cut some stuff up real quick. I'm gonna cut up some uh, pieces of the insulation and uh, get this thing going. You guys, I've been sweating like a pig. Michael, not so much. But we're putting in pieces three and four. This is very exciting. Look at what a tight squeeze this is here. Down. There we go, cool. Perfect. That is a tight squeeze. Damn! And then what you do, Michael, you wanna demonstrate? Oh, yeah, we can on the other it. side, just to get it nice and tight. There we go. Just whack it into place. Get that seam. I know, right down the middle. I mean, get, that's like, that's great. That's within an eighth of an inch, you know, give or take that way. So, anyways. Ah, uh, look at this. It's coming together. I'm so excited. It almost, it, I'm so excited. It almost makes me forgive the Canadian Postal Service and the Canadian UPS for not delivering my crap yesterday. Even though I paid big money for it to be yesterday, they're definitely going to get a phone call. Because uh, if you pay for something, you should get something, right? Ooh. 